How y'all doing? Good? Good. All those in the back row or the back aisle, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's bow our heads real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight and we would ask that you would have your way in this place tonight. That, Father God, that you would, uh, that we would have an encounter. That we would put aside everything that is good, bad, and indifferent. That we'd come into your courts with thanksgiving and praise. That we would come at your feet and bow down and hear your instructions. We love you. We praise you. We give you all honor and all glory. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Okay, come on. We're not doing that today, okay? Come on. How are you doing? There you go. All right. Good. Fake it. Fake it. That's good. Good job. All right. Um, summer is here. Amen? Good Lord. It's hot. Um, all right quickly. Uh, you guys come on and sit down. Billy, let people sit down. Let's go. Come on. All right. Listen, uh, listen, we are, uh, we have spoiled you. It's my understanding that we've been checking you in. We're not going to do that any longer. We're going to have uh, Junior on one side, that side, Sherry said. Junior will be on this side. And Sherry will be on this side. We're doing some st different stuff with the greeters. Uh, we're trying to get more uh, uh, more connected with the body, but also more uh, get more communication, but also to get the visitors checked in and connected as well and trying to find out more about them. And uh, and we're trying to eliminate, eliminate the, the, the backlog that goes on up front. So we're going to bring guests in here. We're going to have four seats reserved on each side. We're going to get them checked in there, get them into the children's ministry, and then uh, they all, they're going to be on those computers and get information. They also will be talking to you, making sure that you're checking in. Pull out your smartphone, please. Pull out your smartphone. Come on, let's go. You always got them anyway. Come on, pull them out. Pull, pull them out. Make sure that the My Church app is on there. Please start checking yourself in. If you have children... Please go to the children's ministry station or up here and check in, get your sticker. We are going to make sure that your, your kid has a sticker before he comes into the classroom because we want to make sure. Yes, that's what we're doing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what I just said. Uh, they, they are to go check in back there and, and, and then print and you'll get the, the sticker printed. We, we, listen, last week, two weeks, no, it was, it was four, went on vacation. I looked up, and I bet I counted 30 people that I didn't know. Well, I, I watched, and there was about 10 of those people that had kids. So it, in the, with those kids, it, it, if, if someone grabbed one of their kids of the 30 people, we wouldn't know because we don't know those kids, right? And so we're trying to do our best to keep safe. We're in a times that we have to do that. We have to do things that are wise. So please help us. We want you to check in, not because we want to uh, 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 control you, but we want to be able to connect with you. We're going 90 to nothing. we got all kinds of stuff going on. Sometimes I don't recognize you're here. Sometimes Lorenda doesn't recognize you're here. It helps us identify when you're not here. And when you're not here and you're part of our family and you've been out two weeks, we want to get a hold of you and say, hey, what's up? If you want to say, we don't like you anymore, go stick it in your ear. That's fine. We love you. We'll mark you off the list. We'll put little devil horns by your name and all that, and we'll move on. On, all right? But if there's something wrong, if something's going on in your life we, and something's happened to you, we want to be involved and we want to know. Just, we just want you to know that we care, we love you, and, and, and we want to reach out to you and, and, and touch you the best way we can. And we are using technology because it's awesome. Amen? All right. So please check in. Uh, uh, Cherry and, and Junior will be asking you to check in on your mobile phone. If you don't, they'll flip that. If you don't have that, they'll flip their laptop around and ask you to check in and get checked in, okay? Please that help us do that. Please help us uh, 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 make this process smooth, all right? We, uh, 
If there's areas that you are seeing that we, we need uh, help in and uh, you, you think that there's an area that's lacking, please uh, see myself, uh, Pastor Ren and James, Pastor Annette, or, or Billy, uh, and, 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 and the whole process of service within our ministry. We want to make sure that we're covering all bases, okay? All right. Um, it, uh, that's it on the, those announcements, uh, which one more thing. Please get involved and help. Uh, we got all kinds of things going on, and um, if you have a heart to go to Africa, I want to uh, I, I want to know that you can do our kids before you could do African kids, and I send you over there. I want you to know that you can serve here and help here before I send you to Africa. Okay, it's a part of the proving process. So so uh, love us through it. Okay, what else do I need to do? Uh, I, Greg starts a new class Sunday. If you were in those other classes and aren't in one, and and get started becoming who you are. Started last week. Um, uh, if you haven't taken that, I recommend that. I know it's Pastor Nat. I love her more than the rest of them, but she's awesome, huh? Okay, she's doing a recap of session one before class, so you won't miss anything. Amen. Go online and register. Use your technology. Right. All right. Before class, anything else? Kids are going to uh, uh, collide next week. Uh, if you got a thousand dollars, send it to them and, and help uh, help pay uh, 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 Ren and, and, and James a bonus for putting up with your kids. Amen. Okay, uh, uh, but be praying for those. We're believing for great things. We're believing for God to move mightily. Uh, next weekend is Fourth of July Saturday. Uh, we are the we go over by the the, the football soccer field. We're re- usually right there. We watch. The fireworks together, the point people, if you don't know where that's at, see Billy. We're there every, uh, we've been there every 4th of July for the last four or five years. It's awesome. We were going to do a barbecue here, but we just were not ready to do it. Next year, we will have a barbecue. Uh, We'll have the volleyball pit. We'll have the other things over at the 5th Street building uh, done. Next year, we will have the other buildings over here because God's going to bless us. Amen. So be be praying on that. Just, Just God is moving mightily. Amen. I know there's a lot of people out, but there's a lot of people going on vacation. There's a lot of people that uh, have are f- there's fighting sickness. Uh, some press through and are here. It seems to be uh, a thing that where stuff comes out both ends. So be praying for that. Amen. Uh, I don't know what that's what it is. Well, no, I'm seriously. Before there was like this, uh, it was breathing and viral uh, congestion. You couldn't breathe, and it's in the chest. Now it seems to be in the tummies. So be praying. Amen. What else? Huh? Austin Bill on July the 17th. Hey, listen, do, help me get a decent crowd here for him. He is an awesome mus- He's an awesome man of God. What? He's phenomenal. He, he's an awesome man of God, one thing. He's, you know what? You know what? The, there's a lot of people that make a stance in the world, and they kind of divide themselves away, and, 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 and that's good in a sense. But we need those people that can be the liaison between the world and in the church, and he is fantastic in that. Uh, he's uh, he's an awesome, um, creative man in 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 his music talent, but also in others. And he 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 helps in the creative arts. So, uh, if you guys would please help me drum up a crowd for him, uh, not just uh, for his sake, but their sake. And let's just believe God to have His way that night. All right, July seventeenth at what time? Seven. Or six, seven? It's seven o'clock. So help me do that, okay? July 17th. Write it down right now. Take out your phone, write it down. All right. And it's online. What else? Anything else? No? Come on up, praise and worship. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Everybody stand. Get out your wallets. Get out your checkbooks. Let's honor the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. Can you get the lights, Andrew, boss? Thank you. Let's, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. We desire to have 
an encounter. Father, we, we, we have great expectation. We had a great night of prayer and believing and praying and declaring, Father God, things that you laid on our heart. We just asked for evidence, Father. You spoke to us and that Sunday was the beginning. Sunday was the start. and We were believing, and it was going to be in, in a couple months, and you said, no, to not, today's the day. We're beginning. Uh, uh, but uh, what you really spoke to us was it was the beginning of the withdrawal, the pulling out uh, uh, of the tide that will pull out and draw, and it will get messy, but then we're going to build up in a tidal wave of goodness and, and grace and mercy is going to come crashing in. So, Father God, we thank you for that. We're asking that you have your way completely just wreck us. We just say yes to whatever you desire. We say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Dear Heavenly Father, fill this place with your glory. And we ask, Father God, that you would bless the tithe and the offering. We ask that you would bless the hand that gives. We ask, Father God, those that have consumed their seed, that they would repent and, and, and then begin to, to sow their seed. And then we ask, Father God, for everyone that is planted, we ask for our harvest, the north, south, east, and west, to come forth, that we may send this gospel wherever you tell us to go. And all God's people said, Amen. Okay. Oh, amen. Come on up. Let's go. Let's worship the King. Bring your tithes and offerings up here. Come on.
God our Savior, He goes before us and leads us on. We wave our banner, strong and mighty. He will not falter. God, our, come on, every voice, sing it again. Because we raise our banner. God, our Savior, He goes before us and leads us on. And we wave our banner, strong and mighty. He will not falter. God, our banner.
shouted and there had to be a response in the natural realm. Things had to fall. They would shout with victory and enemies would be defeated without them having to go to war because they praised and they released the shout of victory. But it didn't even seem like they had victory. And I just want to tell you something. I want you to hear me and hear my heart. Little Jackson's over there and he's, he's just dancing his little heart out. Been feeling good. He's got a little. He had a little virus this week, and but he was. No, he's back there now. He was just dancing, having a good time. He wasn't thinking about whether or not he was supposed to dance or not supposed to dance. He wasn't trying to consider with his flesh whether he should clap his hands or not clap his hands, or lift his hands or not lift his hands. All he did was respond to what he heard, and that's exactly the childlike faith. God commands us to praise to praise Him with our mouth and to praise Him with a dance and to praise Him with hands lifted high and to praise Him with a clap and to praise Him with a shout. Now somebody in this place has something going on and you need some victory. I'm telling you right now tonight it's in your dance and it's in your shout and you need to let it go. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, tell them I will dance. So I will dance around your throne. do 
Pastor Nett and I both feel like um, we're not supposed to go to the Word yet. Don't know if we'll make it there. We both feel like there's something left. I also feel like that there's breakthrough in the praise. And there's breakthrough for s s many in this house tonight. Um, I personally feel like there's there's breakthrough that there's some people in here that is going to touch heaven for some other people that are not here tonight. Um, that, you know, I, I, I'm up here and praising and, and, and there's such, such stuff moving through me and, and then I, I look back and, and, and I see pockets of just bondage or, or, or depression or oppression and and I know that it's right here, and, and but you're here pressing in, and there's many that weren't able to make it, whatever the reason was that kept them out. Uh, and, and there's many of you that have that same thing that I had up here, and, 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 and I'm just giving you a charge that if you would just, as we continue this right here, if you would just, wh whoever's on your heart, whoever you know about, maybe they weren't on your heart, but if you would just give it for Lord, the Lord and just begin to break through and intercede, however God lays it on your heart, if it's a clap, if it's a dance, if it's a shout, you know, I felt like we probably should have said Ruah and shouted it a minute ago, probably missed it, but we'll, we'll catch it back up on this next wave. So just, just be patient with us. I want God to move. I'm expecting great things, and I know that he's here. I can feel it. I know, I know that he's, he's breaking through. Actually, what it is is that we're breaking through, that we're allowing him to, to break whatever's holding us in and, and just let him release in, in, in you the, the freedom and, and, the, and, and the answer and the anointing and the power. Uh, there's people, there's many, there's, there's, there's several in here that need money. And the Lord said, it's coming. It's coming. You have planted the seed. You stand and you believe. He said, shoo away the crows and shoo away the vultures. And he said, shoo away the fowl of the air. But the blessing is coming. He said, stand and, 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 and do not be moved. Do not be moved. Come on.
Dear Heavenly Father, there is an expression of love that you desire. There's areas of need. And the Lord is moving. And because that need, that desire is so strong, He's satisfying your love in a new way and answering the need in a different way and the Lord says look up look around and know I love you and I'm bringing forth your answer I, I don't know who that's for I don't feel like it's just one person. Is there anybody else in this house have something? I thought the Lord just said that this, who, one of you, there's more than one, one of you keeps saying, I can't hear you, Lord, I can't hear you can't hear you but I just saw that the, it was the breath of the Holy Spirit that was being blown over you and there was some debris that was being blown away and that the clarity and the voice of God that you've been longing to hear for the direction is coming that you are hearing him and you will hear him do not be afraid you are a sheep and you know his voice was another person that had something. If, you, if it's you, come on up. It's Vivian. Vivian, you have something? There you are. Sorry. What I'm sensing, it was just all of a sudden I just felt it drop in as we were in this last place of being silent that we have moved into a territory and taken a part of the promised territory that's supposed to be ours to possess. And therefore, that as you're crossing into this territory this night, the things that have held you and bound you are really battling you, and you feel like a stranger in the land, and the Lord says, this is the land I've called you to dwell in. It's not a strange place. It is the place that you're to be living in and dwelling in. It's uh, it's something you're here tonight. It, you're to take hold of it. It's not it's not where you've been. It's just, it's different, and it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's okay. It's the promised territory. That's right along with this, brother. That's awesome. Rick, right before she started, came up and said, I feel like 107, and, and uh, he wanted me to bring it forth. Psalms 107 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands for the, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in, des in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. He led them forth by the right way, that they might go into a city for a dwelling place. That's the promised land. That's what she was just talking about, that you might go in and take. This is it. This is where you're going. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for He was wonderful. his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death, bound in aff affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of their darkness and shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for he is wonderful 
for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and brought and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them, and he delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea, that mount up the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their souls melt because of trouble. They reel to and for, fro, and stagger like a drunken man, and, and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He claims the storm. He calms the storm so that the waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. He turns rivers into a a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, and for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. He turns a wilderness into the pools of water and a dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell, that they may establish a city for a dwelling place, and snow fields plant and plant vineyards, and, I'm sorry, and sow fields and plant vineyards, that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them and they multiply greatly. And he does not let their cattle decrease when they are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He pours out contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high, far from affliction, and makes their families like a flock. The righteousness see in it and rejoice, and all iniquity stops its mouth. Whoever is wise will observe these things and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. The reason why I read it, all of it, is because the Lord covered everything. Something that come against you, something that you stirred up, something that you forgot, something that you caused, something that you did. It doesn't matter. The Lord says, cry out and I shall deliver you. Cry out and I shall bring forth the desired thing. I shall bless you, says the Lord. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, and all God's people said, Amen. Yes. That's a word right there. Get it off the shelf. 
get it off the shelf and start doing whatever he says, what, however you work it. Whatever God, whatever God speaks to you, whatever he declares over you, it's a time of setting free of the old bondage, uh, going through the wilderness and going into the promised land. Everything in your life follows the pattern of Israel leaving Egypt. It's a declaration of a promise. It's a declaration of where he's taking you. And then there's a process getting to it. And he takes you to the, the, the promised land, shows you how to war in the wilderness, and he delivers the promise. Then he shows you how to maintain the promise. Amen? Amen. Lord, bless them in Jesus' name. All right. Shake hands. Hug next. Don't get mixed up. Just somebody you love them. Tell them you're glad they're here. And let's get ready for the word. lights for me please hallelujah huh? hallelujah if I have to amen thank you sir hallelujah <laughs> amen <laughs> it's all good I'm super excited God has just orchestrated everything today this is awesome yeah yeah uh, you're fine. That's fine. It's kind of like the short bus. It works. Is that banana bread? Mm. Sorry. I don't often see banana bread in the offering basket, so hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> Apple pie would have been a, the word of the Lord. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, well... A few years ago, I taught on this subject, and I was perusing over some old teaching notes to get a Destiny Discovery class started. Um, we were adding some material, and uh, it's the end of May I started, and y'all can go to Second Kings 16. That's where we're going. Uh, anyways, I wasn't allowed to put it in Destiny Discovery yet. I have to reteach it, so I'm super excited because... I had no idea just how perfect it would be right now, especially in light of recent events um, in our nation. So it's kind of a good time. I'm going to expand on it. And tonight's not all going to, I'm not going to get through all of it, obviously, because it's 815, unless I feel like torturing you, keeping you here all day. Uh, but I need to try to get to part of this because it goes along with everything that just happened in worship. So, anyways, I want to tell you, we're going to talk about Reformation. Oh, that sucked. Y'all didn't even care about that. You're like, who cares? I care. Amen. Uh, we all want revival. No, you don't. Revival without Reformation would put everybody back in the same situation again. They'd be awake for a while and happy and joyful as long as music was high and their pocketbooks were full or their feelings were satisfied, and then they go right back to where they were before. So reformation means that you, you are changing something. The actual definition is the act or process of improving something or someone <laughs> by removing or correcting faults or problems. Now, of course, it's from the root word reform. Now, reform means, right, this is so cool, to put or change into an improved form or condition, to amend or improve by change of form or the removal of faults or abuses, to put an end to an evil by enforcing or introducing a better method or a course of action, or to induce or cause something or someone to abandon evil ways. Hallelujah. That's good. We need reformation. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. Holy Spirit, I just ask right now that you would just begin to light a fire inside of our hearts to not just want to see people awake, but to see people changed for your glory and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm not sure if you realize it or not, but there are some conditions in our world that need some improvement. <laughs> there may be some evil things that need to be adjusted and taken out. <laughs> And there actually is a better way that needs to be proclaimed. See, Reformation is not just picking out the evil. It's putting in the better way. You cannot remove what is going wrong without 
filling it with what is right. Amen. So you are carriers of the better way. The gospel is the good news. I don't know about you, but my Facebook page lately doesn't seem like it's the good news. And I'm not talking about sinners who sin because I expect them to sin. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Christians, quote, unquote. We don't know for sure. But um, who want to take evil out but not put any good news in at the same time. Look, you can correct and still bring good news. It's all right. Hallelujah. Tonight's going to be more about what caused the problem instead of how to fix the problem. So can you just prepare yourself? What am I, what am I saying? You're probably going to have your business gotten into or your toes stepped on or your butt whooped or something. Okay, so I've been beat up. So uh, just love me and Jesus through it. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just delivering the package. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't shoot the mail, man, if you get a bill in the mail, right? Okay. So... <laughs> And you don't give him honor and glory if he brings you a check. Okay. So uh, I want you to understand that's my hope that you will not be linear in your thinking as we go through this. Okay? And what do I mean? I don't want you to just think about this as a corporate view. When we talk about the cause and the issues that got, we're going to look at some, some time frame in Israel uh, just as a point of reference. Okay? The greatest reformer that ever lived is Jesus. And we'll get to the New Testament in a few weeks, okay? We're going to go in the old, we're gonna be in the Old Testament for a couple weeks. But um, don't just be corporate in your thinking, which you should be corporate. But I want you to be personal in your thinking. So when we're talking about things that cause the nation of Israel or when we start picking apart the church and what's wrong with the church, don't just, you know, point the finger at the church. You need to be doing this too. Because we, need to, we always have to keep two lenses on. It needs to be, and not a lens, not two lenses for you, like one for her, one for him. <laughs> two lenses, one that is corporate and one that is personal, okay? So uh, that way you don't get high and mighty. So uh, let's see. Even though, like, look, the nation has an issue and we need to change it. But guess what? We need to be addressed as well. So uh, we are going to be, second, I told you Second Kings, right? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, at this point in history, the people of Israel are divided into two kingdoms. You have the southern kingdom, which is just the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. I know, it's history. You'll be okay. The tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. Judah is praised. Benjamin's the smallest of the tribes. The rest, the ten tribes, because there were 12 tribes in Israel, the rest of the tribes, they are the northern kingdom, okay? So they are divided. And at the same time, they have other nations that are trying to usurp their authority over them, okay? So there's lots of wars and things going on. And both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom are screwed up. Both of them end up being taken captive by their enemies, okay? So I'm, if one's, not, one's not better than the other. Uh, they all come out of the same man. Okay? So I say that because when you start saying, well, the Methodist or the Baptist, they, we all come out of the same man. Okay? <laughs> oh, Jesus loves me. I'm going to get my glasses. I, I'm like, woo, it's very blurry. Okay. Uh, so the... Here's what's super important is that the most unique thing about Israel is that they were a people who served one God. Every single nation that was around them, this is so pathetic that I am having to put my glasses on to preach. Jesus. Are you cool? Okay, all right. I got it. I got it. I love you. I got it. want to get like a chain and all that crap. You know what I mean? I'm just like, <laughs> LASIK surgery works. I'm still 2020 at a distance. It's just up close that because your reading glasses are controlled by the muscles, not the, the cornea. So now reading just sucks. Okay. So, and I take a medication that makes my eyes blurry too. So anyways, okay. So the most unique thing about, moving on, ah, pray for me. The most unique thing about Israel is that they serve one God. Every single nation around them serves multiple gods. Say multiple. You are so fired, OMG. 
Ooh, like, oh, look at your daddy's face. Ooh, Papa Ricky is not happy. Everybody say, ooh, shame. Oh. <laughs> Just put the towel over it, and then we'll clean it up after church, baby, okay? <laughs> We're having way too much fun in here. Stop it. Way too much fun. It's that joy and praise still going on. Look. Aren't you glad church isn't boring? God knew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to buy you a taco for that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I do not want to be undignified again. Lord have mercy. I was undignified Sunday. Oh, what was that? Okay. So, oh. Okay, Israel served one God, and that one God prescribed to them the way in which they would worship and the way in which that he would be served. Think about that. All the other nations around them, they served whatever God they felt like, whatever pole, <laughs> whatever tree, whatever thing they shaped, whatever they wanted, made them feel good. That's what they worshipped. And they decided the way the worship was to actually take place. Now, the God of Israel, the God that you and I serve, was a little bit different. He called them out as a nation and as a people to be kings and priests unto him. And then he prescribed to them that these are the laws that you will follow to worship me and to serve me. And when you want to worship me... I'm going to have, I'm going to give you a template of a tabernacle, a tent that you're going to put in, in the wilderness. And I'm going to, and he gave them the directions for every curtain, every bowl, every utensil, everything that there was that had to do with worship. God prescribed it to them. They thought of nothing on their own. Not a thing. This, ooh, that, you feel that? That's worship. You don't get to choose how you worship. Oh, that's going to offend some of y'all. Because you don't feel like worshiping the way God has prescribed for us to worship. You're like, well, I'm not in the New Testament. Well, no, you're not. But the tabernacle of David came through the cross, and that worship is still on today. It's the same worship that's in heaven right now, and it's already been prescribed to us, and there's a way that we worship. Hallelujah. I'm going I'm to get a little, woo, I can feel it on me already, Jesus. I don't do things that I feel like doing them. I do them because God has said, you are going to come to me and you're going to shout and you're going to worship me in the dance and you're going to lift your hands up to me and you're going to clap and you are going to sing and you're going to give me honor and you're going to give me glory. And I don't care if you're tired. I don't care if your labrum is torn and you have to have surgery. I don't care if you have a bulging disc and a dysfunction in your, S, in your S1 joint. Annette, praise me anyway. <laughs> Y'all like, I ain't praising him when I hurt. You're crazy. God prescribed to them how to worship the furniture, the every single, even the people that were in the tabernacle to worship. He told, he said, you're going to pick them from this tribe. They're going to do, this is how it's going to happen. They didn't have any, he didn't like confer with them on anything. He didn't even ask them, do you want to eat a shrimp? You ain't eating a shrimp. He didn't ask them. He didn't say, would, I know you, would you, do you want bacon or not? No. He didn't ask him. He didn't care. Thank you. Aren't you glad that those things fell away at the cross? That didn't come through the cross. That ended at the cross. We can eat bacon. Ho, ho, in Jesus' name. Okay. <sighs> okay. Now, by the time we start reading in, this is a long intro. By the time we start reading in 2 Kings chapter 16, uh, they're not doing what God had prescribed for them to do. They are completely jacked up. Um, they are consumed with doing what they want. They're consumed with worshiping the way that they want to, uh, and they've even taken it a step further, and now they're worshiping other gods. So it's not really pretty. And we're going to talk about a people who God had chosen, but they decided they wanted to do things the world's way. They wanted to do things the way that they wanted and the way that other nations around them were doing them. And, you know, God was not happy, not because he's just angry and full of wrath. He chose them. And then they said, 
yes, we will. They actually, in the wilderness, coming out of Egypt, there was a conversation. And there was also a moment with Abraham before that. And there was a yes that was given by them to God. Will you marry me? Yes, I will marry you. Okay, fine. And now they're adulterous. Because that's what worshiping other gods or other things or following after the desires of their own hearts was considered to God. It was considered adultery. If anybody has been betrayed, you know how bad that sucks. It's horrible. So now imagine God's heart. He has delivered them from Egypt. He's done miracle after miracle for them. And now this is how they decide they want to act. They want to lessen themselves to the things that are around them and not keep the way that God had prescribed to them. So during that time, Ahaz is now the king of Judah. And he's pretty nasty and he's pretty wicked. And he actually is the, fir- uh, he's the first king to actually sacrifice his sons in the fire. Sad to a pagan god. People had done it up to that point, but they believe that Ahaz was the very first king to actually do it. That says something, doesn't it? So he burned his children, not all of them, but some of them. Uh, He burned incense at the high places and beneath every green tree. Every green tree he made a place of an altar to burn incense to another god. Weighty, isn't it? It's sad because he was supposed to redeem his sons, not kill his sons. So Ahaz ends up, he's in trouble, and he makes an alliance with the king of Syria. I have to give you the backdrop. You'll understand what we're about to do. So he makes an alliance with the king of Syria, um, and he gets some military help. Um, And then after he gets some military help, he decides he's going to go to Damascus, and he's going to go meet with this king who helped him because he had given a tribute. What he did was he stole all the gold and the silver out of the temple, and he gave it to the king of Syria. He took the treasure that was laid up in the temple and he gave it to a, a, another god, another nation, so that he could get help militarily. When he serves the god who is his defender, the god who said that nobody will ever be able to overtake you as long as you follow after me. He already had the greatest defender and the greatest military uh, regime he could ever have because he had all of heaven. The host of heaven was his backing. If he would have been serving God, but he wasn't. He just thought he'd use the things. And so he stole the treasure from the temple. Think about you. Have, this is the temple of God. What treasure is in you that God has put that you then go give to some other God so that you can have what you want? We give away our gifts and our talents and our treasure that God has placed within us, and we use them for the world. It's just like him. Don't be linear. (laughs) That's one of those moments. It was corporate, (laughs) and it was personal. Hallelujah. So he goes to Damascus to worship. Now we're going to go to verse 10 in the Amplified, 10 through 15. Y'all all all right? 2 Kings 16, 10 through 15. It says, King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet T.P., king of Assyria, and he saw that uh, there their heathen altar King Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest a model of the altar in an exact pattern of its construction. So Uriah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus, finishing it before King Ahaz returned. When the king came from Damascus, he looked at the altar and offered on offered on it, and King Ahaz burned his burnt offering and his cereal offering, poured his drink offering, and dashed the blood of the peace offerings upon the altar. The bronze altar, which was before the Lord, he removed from the front of the house. And and from between its new altar and the house of the Lord, and he put it on the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest upon the principle of the new altar, burned the morning burnt offering, the evening cereal offering, the king's burnt offering, and his cereal offering, and the burnt offering and cereal offering and drink offering of all the people of the land, and dash upon the new altar all the blood of the burnt offerings and the sacrifices, but the old bronze altar shall be kept for me to use to inquire by and of the Lord." Wow, isn't that scary? That, should, that makes me fearful. Uriah's name means the flame of God or the light of Yah. Uriah is the priest. 
Ahaz goes to Damascus. He meets the king that helped him. He goes, obviously, to worship in his temple with him, and he sees an altar there, and he's like, that is one fine altar right there. Some nice craftsmanship. So he, like, draws a sketch, sends it back to Uriah, the high priest, and Uriah sees it and doesn't go, well, that's blasphemous. That's not an altar that God made. Instead, he makes the altar. And he makes sure he does it quickly before the king returns. And then the king gets there, and he takes the bronze altar that God had prescribed and moves it to his own little personal area, puts the new bronze altar in the front, and then he goes so far as not to just make himself sin, but he told the priest all the offerings of all the people of the land are going to be done on that altar instead. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, how can the church and the leaders within the church actually make the altars of abomination that we see today? I tell you what, there are pastors that are making altars of worship to money, celebrity, popularity, sexual perversion, deceptions, a mixed message of grace, and a bunch of other stuff. And what they're doing is they're not throwing out the bronze altar, but they're adding another altar with it. That's what's happening. That's why we are confused when we read things. And we're like, I don't know if that's a Christian or not, but they say they are a Christian. But I'm not really sure because what you see is two altars. We have churches that think if we add an altar to draw others in, <laughs> then when they're there, we'll give them the true altar. But that's a horrible deception. Because, like it said, the pagan altar ended up becoming the principal altar. So when we compromise as a body of Christ, we may think it's just for a moment. It's, we're just going to do it for this one time. We're just going to quench the Holy Spirit for this one service. And what happens is we start to, we make that compromise and we bring an altar in. If we don't destroy it immediately and repent as a people, then we're going to find ourselves halting between two altars and two opinions. And God is not in that. And they did not even, they weren't walking around thinking, oh, I'm, I'm screwed up. They were like, I got this right. I'm good. And that's happening in our nation. It's happening in our nation. I know some of y'all are so disconnected. You don't even care when we minister about awakening and the nation and all that. But you know what? God cares because God wants the earth to be full of the kingdom and his glory. And he's going to do it through his church. So it applies to you. It applies to me. It's not just, I don't just serve Jesus at home and on Wednesdays and Sundays. We are people who have been prescribed by God to be carriers of the greatest man who ever walked the face of this earth and to bring his kingdom to it. And when we compromise and want to act like the world and be like the world, we're setting up an altar. And we do it corporately and we do it individually. We all have them. I hope tonight you start kicking them over or at least acknowledge that they're there. You know, you can't go, you can't go acknowledge any, you can't do anything about what's going on in your life until you acknowledge that you've got something there that God has not prescribed for you. Because sometimes we are praying and believing God, the next minute you're checking your horoscope. Two altars. You believe in God for peace and joy and contentment. And as soon as there's a problem, you are drinking yourself or getting high and putting yourself in a stupor to forget and escape all of your problems. It's two altars. Because when you're not stoned anymore, you're not drunk anymore, you're praising God again. It's two altars. Does not work. Because what happens? The second altar becomes the principal altar. I used to drink. You'd never tell me I'd be an alcoholic. Guess what happened? That altar became the principal altar. It's just one porn site. 
that altar becomes the principal altar. Because God has prescribed a way for us to worship him and to serve him. And he would not have prescribed it if you could not do it. In the Old Testament, it was hard. Yes, I agree. The New Testament, we have Jesus Christ. We have the spirit of the living God. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that resurrecting spirit lives inside of us. He said, I've given you all grace, the grace sufficient to accomplish everything I have told you to do. Whatever altar popped in your head, as soon as I started giving, whatever thing popped in your head, you think, oh, that thing's too big. No, it's not. It is so easy in Jesus. It's so easy in Jesus. You just have to be willing. Well, well, easy. Well, it's going to hurt. Yeah, probably will. There'll be some physical pain, maybe some emotional pain. You may cry. You may feel uncomfortable. You may feel lonely. You may feel like screaming your head off. I literally threw a tantrum on the bed like a five-year-old when I quit smoking. I was so ticked. I am, I mean, on my stomach, wailing, screaming like a freaking t- a five-year-old. This is so bad. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Three days later, the nicotine's out of my body. All's well. Hallelujah. <laughs> Haven't smoked since. Well, one night when I got really mad at somebody, but that's another story. Okay. So. <laughs> So, so you have all this going on in Judah, okay? So you have that going on. And I'm, uh, y'all give me five minutes, okay? It's probably going to be seven or eight. But. So we have this evilness going on in Judah. Y'all all right? If I leave here, you'll just feel defeated. So, But we have major issues in the northern kingdom. <laughs> So 2 Kings 16, let's look at verses 6 and 7. This one's going to hurt you. I love you. Because even though they're separated, they're still one nation. Okay. So in the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried the Israelites away into Assyria and placed them in Halah and in Habar by the river of Gozan in the cities of the Medes. Yeah, 17, 6, and 7, sorry. And this was because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God who had brought them out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh. So at this point now we have a new king in Israel and they had set up the governing place there in Samaria. Okay, So the king of Assyria, because Israel had some issues, look in verse 7, it says that that God had allowed the Israelites to be taken captive by the king of Assyria because they had feared other gods. They were worshiping pagan things, and they were doing things the way that God had not prescribed, and they were, did it, some of them did it out of you know, worship, some did it out of fear. They feared what they shouldn't have feared. He said, fear the, God, fear the Lord your God and him alone. And... They came and took them captive. Now, I want you to see, it says he placed them in Halal, in Habar. He took all the Israelites, and he, okay, it's like somebody coming in a temple, grabbing a whole bunch of buses, and then transporting you to some different cities. That's what happened. The first, I'm going to read that, I'm going to read this verse to you in, with the meanings of the words, okay? The princes of God who were to rule like him were taken away by a step, and made to sit painful and joined and united by the prosperity of cutting off in the anguish of the middle ground. That's 17.6. The princes of God who were to rule like him, that's Israel, were taken away by a step, that is Assyria, and made to sit painful and joined and united by the prosperity of cutting off in the anguish of the middle ground. See, when we don't submit ourselves to God and we start doing everything 
the way other people say to do it instead of the way God has told us to do it. And we start putting everything else in front of God except for God. We end up, it just takes one, they were, they were in their country for a long time, and then one day, one step came and moved them away to a place that was, they were sitting in a place that was painful, and they were joined to it, and they were sitting, it was the prosperity of being cut off, the river being cut off. That's scary in the middle ground because you can't, look, you can't be on the fence. You can't hop between two opinions. The devil owns the fence, guys. The enemy would come in the pastures, and he would, he would get the sheep that were on the outlying areas, the ones that were closest to the boundary out there that would make them a step away from being in the pasture that they were supposed to be in. We rock and roll, we do things for a long time, and we don't ever think it's going to hurt us, and then one day. <laughs> so God let the enemy take them captive. They didn't want to keep their part of the covenant. They had agreed to love him, to serve him, to worship him, to honor him. And they were happy to have his deliverance. They were happy to have manna from heaven. They were happy to have birds fall down. They were happy to have every. They were happy to have water turned to sweet. They were they were thrilled. They were fine with getting free from Jericho. You just start going through the entire Old Testament to get to this time in history. They were happy with everything God had done, and then they didn't like God too much. So it wasn't convenient anymore for them, and they started getting moved by other people. Now, Second Kings seventeen verses seven through eleven. I'm going to read this in the Message Bible. It says, the exile came about because of sin. The children of Israel sinned against God, their God, who had delivered them from Egypt and the brutal oppression of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They took up other gods, with other gods, fell in the ways of life of the pagan nations God had chased off, and went along with whatever their kings did. They did all kinds of things on the slide, They're things offensive to their God, then openly and shamelessly built local sex and religious shrines at every available site. They set up their sex and religion symbols at practically every crossroads. Sounds a lot like our times, doesn't it? These things are everyone. They're, they're everywhere around us. They're on TV. They're in music. They're at the movies. They're on the Internet. They're on our phones. They're on our billboards. Everywhere you look, there is something that the Lord has said is offensive to him. And we're not only entertaining it, we've accepted it, justified it, promoted it, and pay for it. Hallelujah. I, it's hard. I know. I'm sorry. I love you and I love me because I, I want grace <laughs> and mercy. Mercy, mercy on me because I watch it on TV too. It's not that bad. They're using the word in context. You know what I mean? I, look, you know, like don't. I know, I start talking about TV and movies and all that, I get uncomfortable too. Nobody likes it and, you know, whatever. Your music, what, you know, yeah. You know what, but it all sucks. None of it glorifies God, and we think we got, it's fine. And we think God's not worried about it, but we are one song away, one step away from all the things that we don't want. And we don't even consider that. But we are right now in a place in our nation where we took a step. And it's not even about same-sex marriage. It's about our democracy. It's about the way we are governed in this nation. And if you don't think it's not because the, the, the church of God does not have two altars, you're sadly mistaken. That is why the church is laughable to the world. They think it's a joke. Because we sit in the same crap movies that they sit in. We talk the same way. We dress the same way. We don't make a difference because we look just like them. I am guilty. I am not being judgmental towards you. If you think that's my heart, you don't even know me. Because I got issues. <laughs> Things make me laugh that really shouldn't make me laugh. 
I always tell God, please forgive my sarcasm and my humor. But it's funny. It's bad. I know it's not, I know he's like it, but it's funny. I can get so ticked off in an instant, and I can, what you'll hear out of me is, you know, you're a flippin' idiot, but what's inside of me, oh my God. I've murdered you twice. I've murdered you, raised you from the dead, murdered you again. I mean, that, all that stuff goes on inside of me with some, with some people in some situations. I, it's not nice. And I want to get rid of it, but then I go watch a show full of murder. Or I go, you know what I mean? I, I, it, it's, I have sex with that thing in my head. And I'm not saying, like, I'm saying about, when I'm saying sex, when, you, when we watch those things, on TV, and we listen to them, you have to think of that as intercourse with the enemy, because that's really what it is. I know that's disgusting to you, and it should be, because that's what it is. Your courses are entering each other. Your ways are entering, that's what a course is. Your ways are entering each other. That's why the more you are around something and do something and hear something and watch something, the more you do it, because there are the gates to your soul. And it's not a joke. We're a step away. We're a step away. We're a step away. Is that a, it's not a fire, hell, and brimstone message. That's not what I'm talking about. Because you are still saved. Hallelujah. At this point, you are going to heaven. But I don't feel like rolling the dice on stuff with Jesus. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm going to go on whether you like it or not. Okay. So... Look, the world is supposed to be watching those things and doing those things. That's what, the, that's what they are. The unbel- unbelievers are supposed to be. They're unbelievers. And you may be a believer and not through the process yet. I understand that. Look, I didn't go from being saved to perfect in an instant. Now, my spirit did. Whoa, my spirit is perfect. My spirit is rocking. The rest of me has issues. And I'm in process. And as much as I yield to the Holy Spirit and I take the word and I receive the word and I obey the word, the more of my process is being completed. Because all the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen, but they don't just come for free. You've got to work those things out by obedience and by following the principles that then give you that promise. Class number one and becoming who you are. You have to obey the word. Now, so I'm not telling you you got to be perfect overnight, but what is the one thing God is picking on you right now? That's making you very uncomfortable. For me, when I got saved, of course, I had to quit drinking. Then the next thing was cigarettes. And then it was music. Worst thing ever to get rid of in my life was music. I was not headed about that either. But one by one, God began to make my path narrower and narrower, and narrower. And the whole thing is, what God's processing in me may not be what he's processing in you. Hello? That's why Jesus said, can you please get the telephone pole out of your eye before you go get the twig out of your brother's eye? You're not supposed to not get the twig out, but you got to get your own pole out first. And quit putting your righteousness on other people because they're not ready for that yet. However, if you've been in process for 30 years... On one thing. It's time to obey God. <laughs> Remember when I told you a story about my husband one day? He told me, you know, I was in the, in the closet complaining about being fat. And he basically said, woman, shut up. Yes, you're fat. But if you don't like it, go do something about it. We're still married. That's right. <laughs> Guess what? It made me mad. I probably killed him 10 times in my head that moment. (laughs) But you know what? He was right. If I'm going to complain about being fat, um, I got to do the principles that govern losing weight. Not eat as much. Maybe get a little bit of exercise. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe not buy chocolate chip cookies. Speaking of which, who ate all the blueberry muffins? <laughs> I bought blueberry muffins like the day before. I came out, I was like, I ate a half yesterday morning. A half of a blueberry muffin. A half. 
Why? Because I don't want to be fat. So I ate a half a blueberry muffin. This morning, I'm in bed. I wake up late, and I'm thinking, oh, blueberry muffin, the other half. I'm all excited. I come dancing downstairs. There's no blueberry muffins in the house. I'm like, what the hell happened to blueberry muffins? <laughs> Obviously, I can't buy the three-pack anymore. They're huge. Okay. <laughs> It was like, wah, wah, wah. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do devotional time now because I don't have any blueberry muffins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, you've got to do the things that govern it. But, you know, if, I, if, you know, if I'm still complaining about that or not doing it, if I'm still, like, say I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm losing weight, I'm on a diet, and I have not stopped eating for 20 years, I am not on a diet. No matter how much I say, I'm on a diet. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Seriously. Now put that in your life with Jesus. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And then because somebody says, really, you're still processing through that? Let's intercede. And like, you're like, you're judging me. No, I really, I'm not judging you. You didn't have to duck when I came to you. My pole wasn't sticking out of my eye. I'm telling you, really, I'm seeing now. Really, there's something there. And we just, we, it, when we say, oh, you're judging me, we're just saying, I don't want to do what you're telling me to do right now. I don't want to deal with it. That's all. Uh, amen. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Verse 16 through 19. <laughs> we're almost finished. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, we're going to stay in the message. Okay, they threw out everything uh, God, oh, do we need to go there? Okay, yes. Uh, everything God, their God had told them and replaced them with two statue gods shaped like bull calves and then a phallic pole. That's a you-know-what. Uh, for the whore goddess Asherah, they worshiped cosmic forces, sky gods and goddesses, and frequented the sex and religious shrines of Baal, and then even sank so low as to offer their own sons and daughters as a sacrificial burnt offering. It's like, we don't do that anymore. We abort babies. Yes, we do. You're judging me again. No, I had four of them. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you. We are sacrificing our children. And we don't care how many babies. Every, every generation that's going to have a huge move of God aborts or kills their babies beforehand. Read the Bible. Moses, Jesus, our generation, the second coming of the Lord. called the end times okay they indulged in all the black arts of magic and sorcery in short they prostituted themselves to every kind of evil available to them and god had had enough god was so thoroughly angry that he got rid of them <laughs> god, that's not the, that's not the hallelujah part got them out of the country for good until one tribe was left everybody say judah, judah. say judah. judah now judah you know judah had issues still Judah wasn't keeping God's commandments either. The world has issues right now, and there is a church in the earth that is just like, this, just like the people of Israel here, and they are bad. They are prostitute themselves, and they are giving themselves away for some money and an offering. And a 10,000-member church and whatever it is they want to prostitute themselves for. Or they're in a little church, and they cower down to the one who tithes the most. They're prostituting themselves. But there's... A Judah in the earth that still ain't perfect and still has some issues too, but God's leaving them there for a reason. Now, this is good news because we know that the Old Testament is type and shadow. And, of course, every tribe is screwed up, but the tribe of Judah remains, which is the tribe of praise. Let's go to Genesis 49, verses 8 through 10. He says, we're going to the New King James, sorry. He says, Judah, you who are whom your brothers shall praise. Now, this is when he's being blessed. They're putting the tribes in order. Judah, are, are, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Come on, he's keeping Judah in the land. 
Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from beneath his, between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall... <laughs> Be the obedience of all the people. Revelations 5.5 5 says, that, See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root, the source of David. <sighs> he who is one and has overcome the one who is worthy to open the scroll. The lion of the tribe of Judah. We see this in, in Revelation now at the end. But now in this moment in history, as a type and a shadow and a prefigure of what is going to happen, the Lord is showing us that even in the midst of all the, of the church's sin and his people's sin, he's leaving even somebody imperfect, Judah, to bring about his scepter, to bring about an overcoming, to take care of the enemy that's coming against them. Whew, hallelujah, that's good. Now, when verses 24 and 25 of 2 Kings 17, we, this is so funny, I got to tell you this, never leaving. It says, the king of Assyria brought in people from Babylon, Kuath, Ava, Hamath, Sepharvarim, and relocated them to the towns of Samaria, replacing the exiled Israelites, and they moved in as they owned the place, and they made themselves at home. And when the Assyrians first moved in, God was just another God to them, and they honored, they neither, neither honored or worshipped him. And then God set lions among them and the people, and they were mauled and killed. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Okay. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that's, seriously, God is, that's funny to me. There's that humor again, I'm sorry. That's, that cra- he said the scepter's never going to leave from Judah, the lion. And so now the Assyrian God, or king, takes people and he puts them in the place where Israel remember he took all of Israel out and put him in painful cutting away all that so he brings his people in and they get to the land and they don't know nothing about God so they're not even keeping none of God's ways at all so now you have a bunch of unbelievers sitting in a place that God had consecrated that was to him and they're doing what they want to do and all of a sudden lions come out and start mauling them that to me is funny I'm like talking about you know like Figuratively and literally all at the same time. That's funny. So they freak out. So they, let, they, make the, they tell the king of Assyria, we're getting eaten by lions. It's an issue. And they, he says, oh, maybe it's because, you know, they, they figure out that the God that was the God of that land wasn't being worshipped. So that's why the lions came out. Come on. Come on. The unbelieving people figured out that the reason why the lions were eating them was because the God that was ruling that nation was not being honored by them. That's freaking crazy cool. So you know what he does? This is freaking cool too. I'll just summarize it. Y'all can read the rest. So he says, okay, get some of those priests that know what they're doing. Send them back to there so they can teach the people how to honor the God of that land. So there's a group of priests that come, but there's one priest who decides, I'm going to hang out and abide at Bethel, the house of God, and honor and worship the Lord. Man, that's not a multitude. That's one guy doing it right. One guy doing it right. I don't, the other priests, I'm not too sure about, but I know the one guy was doing it right. Now, did he change the way they were? No, they would worship. They'd worship the God of Israel and do what they wanted to do. They they didn't get it right, but it doesn't matter. There's a man in the land who was worshiping and honoring God and doing the sacrifices and doing the things that God had told him to do. And God never wastes the seed ever. Can you imagine that one incense going up before God from that one heart? Doesn't take, doesn't take a multitude, guys. It takes somebody who's willing to stay at the house of God and honor and worship, even in the midst of a land that's full of people. 
that just pretend to worship him. They were doing the very sacrifices, just pretending, just to satisfy him so no more lions would come and eat them. There was a much bigger lion coming. <laughs> Amen. We're going to stop there. And they're like, thank you, Jesus. Shut up. So, are we perfect? No. Can God use us? Yes. Does he want us perfect? Well, of course. So, we have a, a thing going on in our country right now. And all, you know what? It's been going on for a long time. But you know what? So, just now you're aware of it. Like I said, it's not, it's not about certain things. It's just, it's just about our governing, okay, and about your rights. And it woke some people up finally. Hallelujah. We've been praying for an awakening. Guess what? Awakening's not going to come, and everything's going to be, like, rosy, and we're going to be dancing through meadows. It's going to come with shaking. So that's what's happened. There's some people that are going, ding, 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 ding. Maybe I should, maybe I should pray. Maybe I do need to read, read the Bible. What does he say about the end times? We're kind of getting curious about it. That's good. Praise God. What's, what is, what is happening? God's like, ha-ha, two altars. Two altars. So my challenge to you and to I and to us as a church is to make it a conscious prayer to God to reveal to us in our hearts individually if there's an altar inside of us. Some of us already know what it is, and then, okay, Lord. Because, like, you may have ten altars. Just wait for him to give you the one, okay? Because you can work on all nine, but the one will demolish the rest of them. If you'll do what he says, the one will take care of the rest. So you just need to do, do what God says. Be obedient to the one thing he's telling you to do. And then know that you have the grace sufficient to walk it out. You can do it. And if you feel weak and if you feel like you can't do it, then you need to call somebody that you know from this church to pray with you and to encourage you and to hold you accountable. And where two or more are gathered, we have, look, if one could put 1,000 to flight, two could put 10,000 to flight. Get some help in your prayer life if you need it. What could happen between now and Sunday if we got rid of an altar? What? We had awesome worship tonight because God was letting us know that praise is a lion. And praise takes care of our enemy. What could happen? Amen? We'll stand up. I'm about to dismiss and I'll just pray over you. Hallelujah. We forgive you, Lauren, for bringing a drink into the sanctuary and spilling it. It's like it never happened now. Okay. And I still buy you a taco. You lift your hands. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your word. We just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come uh, to convict our hearts. You come to, to bring us revelation. You come to bring us uh, just righteous judgments that you just, you have, the, you have the access to rule and govern our hearts. That we just remove all control of it once again, and we just say, Lord, whatever you want to do in me and through me, do. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just open every heart uh, to the love of the Father, that you'd open every eye to see the way the Father sees and every ear to hear the voice of the Father. Lord, I just pray for grace sufficient just to envelop every single heart, that whatever turmoil they're in, whatever battle that they're in right now, that they would know that they can overcome it by the blood of the Lamb. And may they have a testimony in their heart and in their mouths at the victory that you have brought them through this season. Father, you are worth obeying. We give you our worship. We give you all that we are. We love you. We honor you. We say that you are the God of our hearts. That You are the king over this nation. And you are the Messiah who is coming again. In Jesus' name, amen.